Processing Mixed, A Colorful Story by Ari Chung. This book is written by uh, an Asian American person named uh, Ari Chung, and they're from San Francisco. Chung is traditionally uh, often a Chinese name. It can also be a Korean name. I don't know if Ari is uh, multiracial, um, but as a multiracial person, I find that this book feeds into a lot of um, stereotypes and myths about um, Whose responsibility is it to fix racism? A lot of our modern racial parents have multiracial children and um, kind of speak over us and fail to realize that being multiracial isn't going to solve racism. Like you can't just marry a black guy if you're white, have some half black babies and um, that solves racism. No, um, Brazil, Brazil is uh, very racially mixed and yet racism is still kind of rampant there. So. Oh, this book. Okay, so one of the problems is that it is so cute, right? So it's so cute. It, pr it proposes to spread a good message about um, inclusion and equality, but it actually does the opposite, <clears throat> which I find very harmful. If you're just screaming all white people or all Asian people eat worms, it's a little bit easier to disregard. So you've got in the beginning, there are three different colors. Lots of... Um, Authors have done this before, Leo Leone, there's a few other books about colors mixing and how they were segregated, but it's actually okay to mix. Um, that was a lot less racially coded, even though you could construe it as racial. This, however, is just blatantly racially coded, um, especially printed now. So you've got reds, yellows, blues, whatever, that's fine. The problem is where Arich chooses to give these characters attributes based on their color, um, where it affects their personality and their talents. So reds are the loudest, yellows are the brightest, and blues are the coolest. So we discussed this in our video about Zootopia and how racial coding um, gives authors an out to, um, they're like, well, I didn't mean that all black people are cool. I didn't mean all Asian people are bright, and I didn't mean all white people are loud, because these are just colors. But the truth is, if you're actually looking at it, you're looking at the stereotypes and the bias that actually exists in the environment around us, um, everyone is going to pick up on that, and everyone is going to attribute to that. So why are we teaching children that the color of your skin changes your personality and your identity and the way that you move through the world? Ugh. Okay, so obviously yellow or the brightest is feeding into this nasty um, model minority myth. Um, black people being cool, um, feeding into them being um, them being cool and someone we would want to say appropriate their culture. Um, again, kind of an issue. Um, and I'm frankly, I, this book is so racist, I'm kind of surprised that these people are not indigenous, but I think that the, the pink pe red people are actually coded as white. Um, so everyone lived in color harmony until, as if this ever happened, as if any of the races ever lived in harmony together, um, in this country at least, um, and then suddenly someone created racism. That's not the way it worked. So one afternoon, when Red said, Reds are the best, again, feeding into that narrative that racists are loud, obvious, and bad apple individuals, as opposed to systemic housing inequality, um, prison pipelines, in access to education and resources, and family support. No, uh, racism starts with one loud red person standing on a soapbox shouting reds are the best, which is not the way racism works. Um, and then of course, these people are looking a lot more nerdy. Um, no, we're the best because we're the brightest. Where now, clearly, we've got the issue of racism being just um, bias as opposed to prejudice plus power. So in real life, in our country, white people have all the power. Um, and when they're biased against Asians, black people, indigenous people, Latinx, um, that's dangerous because they already hold power and it's entrenched and they're not even aware of it. In this, we're talking about reverse racism, which is not a thing. Um, where yellows have equal opportunity to fight back. Um, and then we also have the blues are too cool to respond, as if you can just opt out of being discriminated against. Good. So from then, 
Uh, everyone chooses to self-segregate. So this is discussed in the book, uh, Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Um, this is making it look like uh, Asian people tend to congregate around Chinatown because they don't like white people and, and they just like it there. Black people tend to congregate around urban areas. But no, actually, they're pushed towards these areas because it's dangerous and unsafe to be in the to, to be distributed. Um, Self-segregation is not a is not a thing. Affinity groups and pulling together towards um, being squished into smaller places with less resources is a thing. Um, kind of. um, <clears throat> so pushing people into these these denser communities where there are less resources is a thing because there's a power dynamic there. It's not like they just chose to self-segregate um, just because they don't like the other people. It's an issue of safety. Um, and who controls what part of that. Again, completely erasing power from the dynamic of racism is very damaging. And um, I don't know why he would choose to do this. Like, if he doesn't know about racism, he shouldn't write a freaking book. Uh, then one day, a yellow noticed a blue, and then they fall in love, whatever, as if that just happens, as if they're... So there are some naysayers where I don't like yellow's effect on blue, color should mix, okay. Somewhat accurate. I mean, they're ignoring the fact that this is actively dangerous and people have been killed for it, but cool. Um, they're, they're ignoring the fact that about 50 years ago it was illegal. Sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but yellow and blue loved each other so much, they decided to mix. Again, uh, and this is actually pretty accurate. A lot of monoracial people choose to have babies together, believing that their their children, just by existing, are going to solve racism, which is a really crappy thing to put on a baby, right? So I was raised to believe that one day everyone will be beige and racism will no longer exist. And it was my responsibility as a multiracial person to carry that forward, um, to make my own mixed race babies. Um, there's a lot of fetishization saying that multiracial people are beautiful. Really what it is, is they're more, um, multiracial people mixed with white are more aligning with the white ideal of beauty. Um, and it's just, it's very othering. Um, and you, I still to this day, even in racial justice groups, hear monoracial people speaking about us without us as if um, just telling us that we're okay and we're gonna solve racism is going to solve racism, which is not the truth. In fact, we get a lot of the discrimination um, towards our more marginalized uh, racial heritages without being accepted by either group. And this completely erases the fact that we are not accepted within these groups and uh, we don't have a community where we can exist. The book Spork by Keo McLear handles this perfectly and it's a wonderfully validating book. This book, however, is hot garbage. So they have this new color, they created a green. Um, of course, they we're gonna ignore the, the divorce rate among multiracial couples because of the societal pressures and the cultural um, issues that happen when people are interacting through um, different backgrounds. Uh, my parents, for example, got divorced when I was 16, 16 months old because um, there are different expectations for the gender roles between cultures and what each parent is willing to bring to the table. Again, not saying that multiracial uh, relationships don't last forever. We're saying they're completely glossing over the challenges in this and making it sound as it, it's simple enough to just marry someone, have a baby, live happily together forever, and that'll solve racism. So green was bright like yellow and calm like blue, but really she was a color on her own. And again, picking up attributes. I didn't pick up model minority status and um, smartness from my Chinese dad and pick up loudness from my white mother. Actually, no, I kind of did. Separate, anecdotal. Um, but the point is like, the idea that she, blue is, uh, green is picking up personal attributes because of her race as if it is inborn in her DNA is so messed up. Um, everyone was fascinated. No one's hating on this kid. No one's spitting on this kid. No one is looking at this kid as if they're a filthy mutt. Because I tell you what, when I went to Chinatown as a little kid, I was looked at like a nasty amalgamation of like what happens when someone fucks a dog. I was trying not to swear. Anyway, this is not what happens when you have a multiracial children um, child. It's, it's way nastier when they um, look at you and fetishize you and dress you up as if you're like a China doll and um, 
uh, value your beauty because you ascribe more to whiteness or more to the dominant uh, race. Um, I can't even speak from the experience of multiracial uh, non-white people, but this is not what happens. And it's hugely erasive and it pisses me off. Soon other colors mix just because they see you have a mixed kid. I also want a mixed kid. Aren't they just beautiful? And there are strangers who will pull you aside and tell you this and it's gross. Um, so the colors keep mixing and mixing and mixing. And then suddenly they're all hanging out together because they're all mixed. And then they desegregate. That's not what happens because as any multiracial black person can tell you, they're just considered black. And as any um, multiracial Asian person can tell you, uh, they're not really considered Asian. So um, it's different for every single kind of racial mix because of the cultural issues that happen. But what does not happen is this. Um, so thank you for coming to my rant. That is the end. And this book is hot garbage.